if a manager walked up today to you and said, can you use the IP address management, the IPAM feature in Windows 2016 to manage and configure DNS as a result of our time together in this nugget? The answer, my friend, is going to be a resounding yes. Let's begin. What you and I get to do is we're going to start off on our Windows client and launch Server Manager right here from the taskbar on our Windows client. And from Server Manager on the left, we'll go ahead and select IPAM from the left column and give that a moment to initialize. And let me rearrange this just a little bit to make it a little easier to read. And in this nugget, I wanna walk you through how easy it is to manage our DNS environment using IPAM. Now to do that, let's click on the DNS and DHCP servers option in the IPAM column. And this is showing us by default all the DNS and DHCP servers. So we have two servers, DC Nug and Server 2. They're both running DNS and they're both running DHCP. That's why there's four entries here. If we wanted to thin out the herd a little bit, you can use the drop down and we can select DNS. And that will just focus on the servers regarding the DNS service that's running. And the question may come up, well, what exactly can we do regarding DNS management and configuration from IPAM? And the answer is virtually everything. Check this out. If we select DC-NUG and we wanted to create a new zone, all we need to do is right click on DC-NUG. From the drop down, select Create DNS Zone. I'm gonna maximize this dialog box. And then we put in the information for the new zone. So what category of zone do we want? A reverse lookup or a forward lookup zone? What zone type do we want? A primary or secondary or stub? And then the zone name. So let's create a zone called ipam.com. And then where do you want to store it? In a file or Active Directory? Because dc-nug is a domain controller, we can store it in Active Directory. The next question is where do we want to replicate this? Domain wide, forest wide, or have we taken the steps with the DNS CMD command to create a custom partition, and if we've done that work, we could then replicate the zone to all those domain controllers that are specified within the scope of that directory partition. Again, that would presume that we had used the DNS CMD command to create that in the first place. So in our case, let's go ahead and choose domain. Now we only have one domain controller in our domain, that's dc-nug. So if we wanna create a secondary zone on another server, we can do that manually. And then regarding dynamic updates, I'm gonna allow the default of allow only secure dynamic updates. And then down here, we have some interesting buttons. Now we've, we've seen these buttons before. We've seen OK and we've seen Apply. And what I like to do when I'm working with IPAM is I like to use the Apply option. And the reason is if we click on Apply, it gives us an option to see what the heck just happened with a little summary of what it did, whether it was successful or if it failed. If we click on OK, it does a quick flash of that summary page and then it goes away. So. As a general rule, I like to click apply so I can see what the heck just happened. So in our example here, we'll go ahead and click on apply. And in the background, the IPAM server is talking to DC Nug saying, hey, I'm creating a new zone. And as part of that cool new zone, there's an SOA record, a start of authority record. And there's also a name server record. And that name server record is you, DC-Nug. And then we have these success messages, which is great, which is why I like to take a moment and just view that summary. All right, and then we can click OK to go ahead and dismiss this window. So we were up here in the DNS and DHCP servers, and then once we created the zone, it dropped us down to this area right here, DNS zones. And because we're in a lab environment and we're booting all this up at random times, the zone status is a little bit wonky unless we refresh it. And so what I would recommend we do just to get a nice starting point is let's go ahead and refresh this zone information, this zone status, and let me walk you through exactly how to do that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take each of the zones and right click and then from the drop down, select Reset Zone Status. Then click OK, and then just repeat that for all the zones where you want to reset that status. So, as one more example of this, we'll select practice.com, right click, from the drop down, select Reset Zone Status, click OK, and then repeat that for all of the other zones. So, now that we've done the reset for each of those, there's two more steps that we want to do. The next step would be to go ahead and go to Tasks and select Retrieve Server Data. So we can have all the latest and greatest information via those servers and be able to act and look at that data. So we'll select Retrieve Server Data. We can click up here and it'll show us those current tasks that are happening. It'll also help us to confirm when they're done. Fantastic. So we'll go ahead and dismiss that yellow bar at the top. So the first step was to reset the status on each of the zones. The second step was to reload the data. And the third step is to click this button right here to refresh our screen here in Server Manager. So we'll go ahead and click on the refresh icon. 
And that looks way, way better. All right, so back to our narrative. In DNS servers, we created a new zone. Now we're looking at the zones, and there's our zone right there, ipam.com. So if we select ipam.com and we scroll down a little bit, in the details view, it has da -da -da -da, details regarding that zone. If we click on the authoritative servers tab right here, it currently shows us that dc-nug is the only authoritative server for that zone. And that's because we haven't set up an additional name server to support this zone yet, nor do we have a secondary zone on another server yet. So if we want to modify this zone, we'll scroll back up to the top to the list of zones. And with ipam.com selected, we'll right click. And from right here, we could add a new DNS record like A records or quad A records or MX records. We could edit the zone or even completely delete the zone right here. So let's click on edit DNS zone. And I brought the edit zone properties full screen. So here are the general properties. If we click on advanced, this is like the advanced tab in the GUI for DNS manager. Here we can set the advanced options, including scavenging, if we wanted to enable that feature and set the intervals. If we click on name servers, right now we have dc-nug as the only name server. If we wanted to add a new name server record for this zone, all we need to do is simply type it in. So let's add server two. So servers two fully qualified domain name is srv2-nug.nuggetlab.com. We'll click on add record. And then we can continue down the list. So on the left-hand side, if we click on SOA for start of authority, we can modify the parameters here. If we click on zone transfers, it might be important between a primary and a secondary zone to be able to allow zone transfers from the primary. So if we want to enable that, we put a check in that checkbox, allow zone transfers. And instead of saying to any server, we can say servers who are on the name servers tab. And we can also do an automatic notification to servers on the name servers tab. So if we go up to name servers, this is like the name servers tab. That would include server two because he's on that list. So if we go back to zone transfers, Make sure it's set how we want it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on apply. <laughs> that way we can see the little summary regarding what happened. So we'll click on apply. The IPAM server is now talking to dc-nug, making those changes. And it created the name server record to add server two as an authoritative name server for that zone. It also modified some properties of that zone. For example, one of the changes we made was the scavenging that we allowed. So that's great. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. If we wanted to add records to that zone right here through IPAM, we could right click on the zone. From the drop down, select Add DNS Resource Record. And I'll click on that and then bring it full screen as well. And from here, we're going to click on New to create a new resource record. Next, it's asking us, hey, what type of resource record would you like to create? So let's go ahead and select A as a IPv4 host record that we want to create. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit. And let's create a host record for Server 3. So we'll type in SRV3. It automatically appends the domain of ipam.com on for us because we're in that zone. And the IP address that we want to use is 192.168.1.103, which is the actual address of that IPAM server. And we'll go ahead and create a pointer record for the reverse lookup as well because we do have a reverse lookup zone supporting that IP address space that we created many nuggets ago in this course when we were working with DNS and reverse lookups. And then we have some tricky buttons again. We have the add resource record here, and we also have OK. And it's a little tempting sometimes that you see the OK button, you click OK, but we need to click on add resource record first, which adds it to this list, and then we click OK to add the record. So we'll click on add resource record. It added the resource record right here, and now we can click on OK. Or if we want to see the results, <laughs> click on apply, which we just did. Then we can verify the results, and then we can click OK to dismiss the window. So based on this, it looks like we have the record created, and it also looks like it put an entry in the reverse lookup table for us as well. We'll verify that here in a moment. So we'll click on OK to dismiss that screen. And while we're here, let's create one more record. Let's create a quad A record. So we'll right click on ipam.com. From the drop down, we'll select Add DNS Resource Record, and then we'll bring that full screen. We'll click on New. From the type, we'll go ahead and select that we want to create a quad A record. Then we'll scroll down, and let's call this server 3 as well. And this time we'll put in an IPv6 address of 2001 colon db8 colon 6783 colon colon. And let's use 103 for that last grouping. So for this example, let's assume that's its IPv6 address. And we don't have our reverse lookup zone for IPv6, so I'm not going to say please create a pointer record. And I'm also not going to click on OK right here because we need to scroll down a little bit more. Click on the Add Resource Record. That puts it in the list right here. And now we can click on Apply or click on OK if you don't care about seeing the results. So let's click on Apply. 
We have a success message about the new resource record, which is great. And now we can click on OK to dismiss this window. Now, one way of testing this is we could just go to the Windows icon in the bottom left-hand corner, right-click, and then from the menu, select Command Prompt, and we can just do a few simple NSLOOKUP commands and verify whether or not DNS has that information. So let's use NSLOOKUP space, and let's do a dash type equals A, and let's look for server3.ipam.com. Okay, so that looks happy, happy for the A record. And if we hit the up arrow key, and for the type, we add three more A's for a quad A record and press enter. That also looks happy, happy. <laughs> I suppose I suppose we also could have just done an NS lookup and removed the types all together, just like that. NS lookup server3.ipam.com, press enter, and that would give us the IPv4 and the IPv6, which indeed it did. Also, <laughs> it's interesting to note that uh, when we're doing these requests, when it shows us the DNS server as its IPv6 address, that means that for those NS lookup commands, our client was actually using IPv6 to make those requests. Also, to verify that, what we could do is I have a little utility. There's an icon here in the taskbar for it. It's called the Microsoft Message Analyzer. And if you launch that, I set it up to run with administrative privileges, so it's going to require a confirmation with user account control. If you click on Yes, and bring up the Message Analyzer, and then from here, click on Start Local Trace. We can also put in a filter, so I'm going to click right here in this space, and for a filter, let's type in DNS, and press Enter. And that's going to include DNS, whether it's IPv4 or IPv6. And while that's running and collecting the data, let's go back to our command prompt just for a moment. And let's hit the F arrow key a few times. And let's do the NS lookup command with the dash type equals A looking for server 3. So even though we're looking for an A record, the local protocol that our client that we're sitting on is choosing to use to communicate over to the DNS server is IPv6. And the Microsoft Message Analyzer will allow us to confirm that. So we'll press Enter. So let's go back and take a look at the analyzer. And let's give this PC a little bit of a break by going to Session up in the top left, and then selecting Stop. So that'll stop the collection of the data. If you want to get rid of some columns, you can right-click on that column and say Remove, and that'll remove that column. And for the filter, <laughs> I typed in DNS, but I need to click on Apply to apply that filter. There we go. So that's just showing us DNS traffic out of all the packets. So if we expand the columns a little bit, Here's our client DNS requests. So if we click on those, there's more details down here in the details pane. And let's go down to uh, our bottom one right here. And with that one selected, it's showing us down here in the details pane that the query name we're looking for was server3.ipam.com. The type was an A record that we're looking for. And if we expand that packet where the request was, it'll also show us the response. So packet 128 was the question, and 130 was the response back from the DNS server. And if we scroll down through the results here and expand the answer, the answer was 192.168.1.103. So just a quick word to the wise, if you don't want to worry about your client running IPv6 or working with IPv6 as it communicates, you can just go to the properties of your network adapter and disable IPv6 as a protocol you're willing to allow the computer to use. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a file and exit. And I'm going to close without saving regarding the Microsoft Message Analyzer. The last thing I think we had to do is let's go ahead and create a secondary zone for IPAM.com over on Server 2. So to do that, it's pretty much the same process. We click on DNS and DHCP servers. From the drop down, we have DNS selected to thin the herd out a little bit. We'll select Server 2, right click, and then from the drop down, select Create DNS Zone. We'll maximize that screen. And we do want a forward lookup zone, but as far as the type, we want a secondary zone. We put in the zone name of ipam.com, and then we're going to specify who the master DNS server is, which is dc-nug.nuggetlab.com, and click on Add. Now, because dc-nug.nuggetlab.com is in DNS, it's resolving it to these IP addresses. So if you don't want to use the IPv6 address, simply select it, click on Remove, then we're just going to use dc-nug at its IPv4 address. Or if you do want to use the IPv6 address, that's great too. Just make sure it's a conscious decision. So with the address of the master server there, we'll go ahead and scroll down. 
As far as storing the zone information, because Server2 is not a domain controller, it can't store it in Active Directory. So it's going to store it in a file. The file is going to be ipam.com.dns, and we'll click on Apply to make that happen. We have a success message, which is great, and we'll click on OK. And then just for grins, to make sure we have the latest and greatest information, we can go to Tasks and select Retrieve Server Data, and then after a few moments when that's done, click on Refresh. Also, what we could do is we could select DNS and DHCP servers, and then right-click and select Server 2 and right-click on Server 2. And if we wanted to launch the DNS Manager directly, we could do that here. There's a shortcut to launch the Management Console for DNS. So if we click on Launch MMC, and then we go down to Server 2, and we expand it, and we expand Forward Lookup Zones, and we expand IPAM.com. Here we have the start of authority record for it, which is going to indicate that it's a secondary zone. We have two name server records regarding the two name servers, DC Nug and Server 2, which support this zone. And then we have the A record and the Quad A record that we created earlier up on DC Nug for this zone. And that information has been replicated down between these servers. And primarily a big part of that was because when we modified this zone up on DC Nug, we authorized the zone transfers. So that way, when Server 2 came a knocking and said, hey, I need a copy of the zone, DC Nug said, sure, you're on the list, you're authorized, here you go. So let's go ahead and close DNS Manager. And we can also close Server Manager to bring us back to the desktop of our Windows client where we're doing the remote administration from. As a result of our time together in this nugget and the learning that's been done, along with the hands-on practice to reinforce that learning, if a manager now came to you and said, hey, can you manage and configure DNS properties through the IPM interface? The answer would be absolutely yes. So enjoy the newfound knowledge and skills, and I'll see you, my friend, in the next nugget. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.